At the end of the lesson, you are expected to identify the steps of modeling using matrices, follow the process of modeling using matrices, and appreciate the significance of matrices in modeling. Usually, we use scalar for modeling. So this time, we're going to deal with matrix equation. So although we discussed this in our previous lessons, this lesson focuses on the step-by-step -step process on how to deal with matrices in processing modeling for making an algorithm or building an algorithm. But before we continue, do not forget to click the subscribe button and the not notification bell to receive updates of our machine learning, deep learning, and natural language processing. So we will have these steps one by one. Okay, now, the first step is that we're going to multiply a certain matrix with its transpose. So here we are just considering two dimensions. So when we say two dimensions, we're actually referring to two columns, okay, or two rows, right? Yep, okay. So here, this shows that we first transpose our x our x here is actually our matrix and then the x here is the original matrix and then when we do this process then we get this result as you could see here we get the summation maybe you would like to ask me um, why is it that we use here summations okay one two three four summations why is that remember that we are considering here matrices and because we are considering here matrices expect that each row and each column has a lot of elements okay that's why we get the summation for each row okay so after we're done doing this the next step is that we're going to take the respective average of each element so for us to be able to denote properly the average now we're going to use x bar so this is x bar and this means that we are getting the average so we have x transpose x this is actually the same but then again here we are getting the average so n then we get the average for this one and then the average for this and this one represents this and this one represents this Okay, as easy as that. Just take the average. That's no brainer. Okay. Now the next step, the third step that we're going to do is that we have to execute. Or the next step that we have to execute is that the identity for the inverse of a two by two matrix enables us to invert it. So we have this. So in me, it means that we're going to get the inverse of this one okay so first is that we have here 1 over n then we have this is actually the the identity I mean uh, I mean because we, we have the identity then we could get the inverse okay so 1 over n and then this one x 0 2 x2 1 here what we do here is actually okay if you don't have some or enough knowledge about why or how we get the the inverse then it's like this okay so x0 2 times x1 2 that's why we have here then for this one we have x0 x1 x x1 sorry x1 x1 x0 then x0 x1 okay all right then we have x squared 1 x squared 2 then 0 notice that what we do here for the diagonal is we square okay again let me repeat that because that's very important the our observation for this diagonal elements of 
our matrix is that we square okay so we square, we square because we multiply that with itself even if we do the transpose because the first element would still be the same and of course the last element of both matrices the transpose one and the original one so that's that's why it is squared okay now notice that we have in here x1 2 which is here so we just exchange their places or switch their places and for this one maybe you would ask me do we still have to switch their places of course no so what we do is just we change the sign here so here it's positive now it becomes negative okay so basically that's how we do it when we would like to do the inverse okay so the inverse is actually a necessary part for doing the identity matrix so we had that in our lesson so please review um you could see that in our course the deep learning mathematics it, it is in there so this is just a very simple review so that you could just go through what we are doing here in the process so after doing this one maybe you would ask me then what's next what would be the, the, the next part of this very interesting process so our next step is that we have to execute okay I mean so we are now in step number four right okay one two three four okay step number four is that we will multiply the result of this in num with the transpose of the original x so here x see we just copy this one and then we're going to mu multiply this with the transpose of the original matrix see the transpose but of course not this one okay, just the transpose of the original all right and then after getting this one so the next thing to do is that the result is multiplied with y okay okay we will we, we will multiply that with y so we will jump then okay so i would like to let you see the process of course we just copy this one and then the result is multiplied to y okay so again just for for brevity we will just jump off directly to the average notation and then we will get this one so after we get this then we are going to get the, the average then we have x 0 y then x 1 y okay and then this actually represents our first parameter which is w0 and then this one represents our parameter which is w1 so it means to say our equation or linear model would be w0 plus w1 we have xn okay so this would be our final product what is this for why do we have to study this in many machine learning applications we do not consider a few variables only instead we are accepting the fact that we have to deal with thousands of attributes that can be dealt with using matrices and vectors so with this the results would be more accurate after all being said and done let's try this how do we process the modeling using matrices why do we use matrices in modeling please leave your answers in the comment below so that we would be able to have a very rich interaction and exchange of ideas do not forget to subscribe like and share please click the bell button to be notified every time we have a new session see you in the next lesson